Welcome back. Still here today on the campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College. Today, talking about all that is the public safety program here. Right now, we've got Brandon Stevenson, who heads up uh, some of the uh, law enforcement and the upcoming UVS or drone program. Been trying to get you on for a while. I know you're busy. Thanks for being here today. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Last week, we had the first of what will be several workshops for UVS, or Unmanned Vehicle uh, Systems, commonly called drones. Talk a little bit about what we're doing in that respect and, and how exciting that is. Well, basically what we're doing is we're, we're allowing um, people in the community, uh, high school students, whoever, the opportunity to, to take a safety certification program to use the unmanned vehicle systems and a, um, a ground school certification, which is, as they roll into commercial use, those, those are two certifications they're gonna have. Um, the last workshop we had was basically uh, focusing on agriculture, and these things are really booming in agriculture right now. Um, there, there's so, so many different uses for them that's allowing farmers that have thousands of acres to be able to cover those thousands of acres very quickly to check their crops, trees. Um, there's some uses for, for cattle management, doing a lot of stuff with them. The thing about it is that, that generally in order to, for them to use them for commercial use, there has to be a, a pilot that's, that's operating the system and a spotter. So uh, talking to some people from Farm Bureau, they're saying there's some places down in central Florida that are hiring them, two at the time, starting out $25 an hour for them to come on their farm and basically fly over it, uh, check their crops, pull in data using some software on a laptop, and then feed that data back to them so they can focus on stuff like fertilizer and um, irrigation, irrigation, you know, wherever they need to, to really focus on their crop to, to make it as best as it can be. The way it stands right now, I know there's a lot of confusion about the, the rulings, about the regulations, and they're changing all the time. And even FAA keeps putting things out that things are going to change. Mm -hmm. As it stands today, interestingly, this past Christmas, drones, and we'll use that term commonly, Drones were the single one item upon which most, uh, more money than anything else was spent as Christmas presents. Mm -hmm. That shows you how mainstream they've become. In addition, the military application drones, uh, I, I don't imagine the Predator or the Hellfire missiles, but some of the smaller ones, with the downsizing of some of the theaters of, uh, of active combat, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, and so forth, some of that technology is coming back, so they're having to find domestic uses for it. Yes, sir. Right now, as it stands, I got a drone for Christmas. I didn't, wish I had. My wife's watching, <laughs> hint, hint. If I got a drone for Christmas, under $1,000, I can get a nice drone with good camera, with mm -hmm. a gimbal, uh, take really good stuff. We've got a friend that uses one of those now, so I know. Yes, sir. All right, I've got one of those in my hands. What do I have to do? What hoops do I have to jump through to be legal to go out there and fly that thing uh, for a non-commercial use, just for my own benefit, what can I do to go out there and just and just shoot video and photo? Um, generally, what they're, they're kind of changing those rules up right now, and they haven't put anything indefinite for really uh, a lot on the hobby side of it as more as they're focusing on the commercial use of it. Well, hold um, on then. I, let, me, let me cut to that. Okay. Same scenario, but, I, but somebody wants me to pay me to take, mm -hmm. take video of that building. Um, in that aspect, then they'll need that, that safety certification and they'll need Which that. you're offering as part of this workshop? Yes, sir. No, sir. We're offering it in the fall for our program. That will be the program. Yes, sir. Good. Safety certification and ground school. We're, uh, we're working with uh, Emory Riddle and we're also working with Unmanned Safety Institute and um, using, you know, some curriculum from, from both schools and incorporating that into their, you know, their ability to, for their ground school and their safety certifications that they'll have to have. Embry-Riddle, arguably the leader in aviation education. Yes, sir. That's huge for us in yes, Little sir. Chipley. It is. It's a, it's, a, it's a great step, and we're really excited to be working with both of those, uh, both of those entities, and it's really going to push this program to, uh, to excel. Talk about the duration of the program, um, the cost, if you know, and, and exactly when you're going to start. Um, we're, <clears throat> we're hoping to start in the fall. As far as the cost, I'm not sure we're working some things out to see. We, we've been working on curriculum, um, looking at, at what we're wanting to pull in there. 
we're hoping to, you know, for starters, have the ground school and safety certification. We know we're going to do that. The next part of it would be, you know, maybe some applications, um, advanced use, and giving the students some exit points where they can they can get out based on what they need. Um, so yeah, if they I just like need the ground yeah. school and they just need the, the safety certification, um, then they can do that. If they have no idea how to use a, a computer or anything about software, then that will be embedded in the program as well. So it can take a person that has zero experience and, and push them into an advanced user or a person that's been messing with the things for a while um, and, and help them out a little bit as well. So it offers and legalize for, them, for us. Basically. For legalize them, yes, sir. Just the, just the part to become certified. I'm computer savvy, know mm -hmm. how to use a drone, mm -hmm. have flown before. Just the part that's going to make me legal, what, what, how many hours are we talking about? Probably about 150, 150 hours. Um, so, you know, based on whether it's a full-time or a nighttime gig, you know, it, it would depend on how long it's going to take them to do that, but 150 hours. Uh, the other thing about the ground school that's, that's good is that that will also allow the student, if they wanted to get a pilot's license, um, that, that opens that avenue up for them to, you know, go make contact with a, with a flight instructor, uh, say at a local airport here, and get some flight time in and actually get their pilot's license off of that. Wow. Man, I'll tell you, it never ceases to amaze us the cutting edge technology that we are embracing, teaching, and qualifying people to use themselves in the workplace. Right here, at, at one point, was called the Votech. Yes, sir. Uh, people sort of uh, besmirched uh, the name. Uh, oh, you're going to go off to be a welder. You're going to go off to be, you know, a culinary person, meaning that you're going to sling fast food or, you know, you're going to do hair. This is a full-blown college now. It's offering the programming which allows people to go out there and, again, not competing with four-year colleges, but within a very short period of time be able to make a decent living yes, sir. with a well-paid job. It is. The, the industry certifications are, are really picking up now as far as a, a, a whether it's a high school student or whether it's somebody that needs to get a well-paying job um, at a short amount of time. You know, our, our programs in public safety are, are fairly short, the longest one being law enforcement. Uh, it's 770 hours, you know, for a full-time student. If they went full-time during the day, they could get done with it in about seven months, and that would, you know, allow them to work uh, local law enforcement, which would, you know, city or county, as well as state law enforcement, um, FHP, FWC, you know, that kind of stuff. And uh, Well, this is what would be commonly called that. standards, the standards course? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So if somebody needs standards, and that's, that's mm -hmm. something I understand, that I uh, mm -hmm. you know, hear that term, this allows them to be able to take that interview with that law enforcement agency for a job. Yes, sir. This will, this will have them, uh, all of their, their basic certification that they would have to have, um, this takes care of that. If, if they were to work for a, a state agency, they're generally going to have a, something like an eight-week program that they'll put them through in order to, to specify, spe you know, be specific on what their, their job entails, whether it's FWC or FHP or whatever. Yeah, so whether you're going to look at a small city uh, police force, you're going to look at a sheriff's office, you're going to look at FDLE, you're going to look at highway patrol, even FWC, mm -hmm. uh, lots of opportunity. And again, along with corrections, law enforcement's a growth industry. Yes, sir. There's, there's The need for law enforcement officers is certainly not diminishing by any means. Yes, sir. Challenges are pay. It and is. let's talk about that elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. I know in Washington County specifically, in which we find ourselves, Right now, the way I understand it, or at least the last word, was that after insurance is taken out, these new guys are starting at about $14,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate or it's, close? It's a little bit more. Um, uh, the starting, starting around Washington County is around twenty eight. Um, in, in, that, in that area, or somewhere between 20 and 28. Um, and it depends on how big the county is, you know, and, and what they have to offer as far as what, you know, their agency size is and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there are some, there are some, you know, municipalities that are small and they are making, you know, 14, 15,000. And for doing the same, uh, the same job as uh, an officer at a larger agency, they still have the same responsibilities, they have the same training, um, and but that pay is, is pretty bad, you know, when it comes to that. As part of our series of Meet the Candidates, we spoke recently with a, a candidate for sheriff in uh, Jackson County, 
And um, their starting pay for a deputy in Jackson County was well over 30000 Yes, sir. Um, and he thought that that was low because if they looked at uh, uh, Bluntstown um, or in Calhoun County, and the relative number of people that they were policing, they were paying about the same, but for about 25% of the number of people that mm -hmm. you would be overall in your area that you covered. Yes, sir. So I guess the grass is always greener, and at the end of the day, it's about quality of life. So for someone who wants to live in New York City and get paid whatever NYPD gets paid, that's one thing versus living in Chipley and the quality of life that we, we both enjoy here. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a lot to be said for what that brings to the table yes, as well. Yes, sir, it is. It's, it's, it's a, um, it depends on what the person wants. You know, they can go through our program um, and at this, you know, at this college and go down to Miami and, and go to work for Miami Police Department if they want to. Um, you know, it, it just all depends on what they want and what their, you know, their goals are. Recapping, uh, I know we're doing a series of the drone workshops. Yes, sir. Uh, we got one coming up. Depending on when people are watching this, we don't want to give any specific dates necessarily. How many in that uh, series of workshops will there be? Do you do you know? We'll have uh, the one that's coming up is going to is going to focus on transportation, um, and the one after that will be uh, search and rescue, and that's that's going to be the the main ones that we're doing right now. We're looking at doing a couple of other ones, uh, some safety stuff, uh, just trying to, I guess, educate and help people be aware of, of what they are and what their uses are. There's a lot of, a lot of negativity towards them. Um, and our biggest thing is, is to make sure the person's being safe with it, um, getting, getting their certification with it, and allowing them, you know, as a tool to, uh, to help them based on whatever their responsibilities are for what they do for a living. Uh, I, you know, at the workshop, I told them that I didn't know, you know, what their responsibilities were. Uh, but f if they could sit here and listen to everybody talk about the uses that they're getting out of it, then maybe they can pick something to use, you know, for their occupation and make their job a lot easier. Unfortunately, there's opportunities for people to be stupid in every part of life. No, yes. Young kid getting a driver's license, person f handling a firearm for the first time, in this case, drones. Yes, sir. In our industry, uh, heavily centered on video and photo work, um, huge opportunities within that unmanned vehicle uh, system. Ordinarily, you would have had to hire a helicopter back in the day that you yes, wanted sir. to get aerial footage. Uh, now, um, very, very economically, cost-effectively putting that same production into the hands of a, of a, of a small production company, huge. Back to law enforcement to wrap it up, um, how often do you offer the law enforcement classes? Is that on demand as well? No, sir. We do uh, open enrollment with that to, to allow the students to come in anytime we have a block of instruction starting. Um, we've got the next one starts the 10th of this month, and then there'll be another block that'll start next month. So, you know, it's the same guidelines as far as them needing to take the, the CJ BAT test, um, a physical background check. Um, drug screen, those those type things, they can get all of those things taken care of and, you know, turn in their paperwork to start the program anytime we have a block starting. Open enrollment is something we do enjoy here on campus in many of the programs. It allows someone, if they're ready to start a program, for you as an instructor to allow them to do so. Yes, sir. Many times we find if somebody wants to go into a program and they have to wait six weeks or six months, Chances are something else is going to come along, especially if they have a family to feed yes, sir. and they have a window of opportunity. The open enrollment is huge. What that allows is people to start the program at any time or within defined times, and then you're continually having people come in and rotate out of the program. Mm -hmm. Does that work out pretty good in, as far as law enforcement? It does for them. It, it does for them. It makes it a lot easier on them so they don't have to wait for a specific start date. Um, sometimes it may be a while before you have enough students that you can run that program, so it makes it a lot easier to allow that open enrollment in there for the students just to be able to come in during that, that block of instruction. Um, and we do the same thing for the, uh, the high school students. You know, we offer that dual enroll program for high school students to be able to come through the Law Enforcement Academy. Uh, still, they'll do their high liabilities in the summer. And once they do, you know, their high liabilities, they can go take their exam. Even if they're not 19 years old, they can still sit for the test, take their, their state board exam. And then once they turn 19, they can be hired at an agency somewhere. What better opportunity to harness the enthusiasm and that desire on the part of that high school student to enter public service yes, sir. than to allow them to, to do that while they're still in high school? 
Brandon, is there anything that we may have missed? Anything to do with the UVS or drone program? Anything to do with law enforcement that, that sticks out? I want you to come back over time and keep us updated, but is there anything right now that we haven't, uh, we, that we've failed to talk about? Uh, no, sir, I don't think so. We'll thanks for it. taking the time. Uh, thanks for all you guys being here today. Uh, many times your programs are a little overlooked. You're at the end of the campus, depending on which way you're looking at the campus, and many times um, you don't get the spotlight on you that you should. I'm going to put that on you from now on. You guys let us know. You come on over here, open invitation, come talk to us anytime. Appreciate that. Thank and thanks you for much. being here today. I appreciate you having me. Here right now with Brandon Stevenson from the Law Enforcement Program, also heading up the brand new uh, cutting edge uh, drone program or UVS Unmanned Vehicle System Program coming up this fall. Uh, huge opportunities, just some of the 40 uh, over 40 degree and certification programs offered right here on the campus of Florida Panhandle Technical College. We'll be right back. 